Most of them would have experienced a patient undergoing cardiac arrest in clinical setting. Cardiac arrest not only occur as a result of cardiac disease but can also occur due to non-cardiac disease which we call them as reversible causes. However, in practice, while performing CPR, it is often stressful to remember the reversible causes, heads and teeth. But through this video, let's make it easy. Before going to the video, if you didn't subscribe the channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get the uploaded videos immediately. First, let's see what is cardiac arrest. It is defined as the cessation of cardiac mechanical activity that is stopping of heart from pumping which happens due to failure of conduction system of heart as confirmed by absence of signs of circulation. To know the conduction system of heart, link is given in the description. In cardiac arrest, Apart from CPR, defibrillation and medication, it's time to think about the possible reversible causes. They are the 5 heads and 5 T's. What are the 5 heads? They are the hypoalemia, hypoxia, hydrogen ion, hypo hyperkalemia, hyperthermia and a 6th H we consider and treat if the patient is hypoglycemic. The 5 T's are toxins, tamponade, tension pneumothorax, thrombus and trauma. Let's see in detail one by one. Let's see about the first H, hypoalemia. Hypoalemia is a state of low extracellular fluid that is loss of fluid volume in blood which leads to decreased tissue perfusion. The possible causes are poor intake and losses through vomit, diarrhea, dehydration, sepsis, blood loss due to GI and injuries. In this, any can cause clinical symptoms such as tachycardia, hypotension and hyperthermia. If we consider patient have hypoalemia cause, then immediately gain IO or IV access and start with fluid resuscitation or blood products. The second reversible causes is hypoxia, that is decreased level of oxygen in the tissue. If you see the possible causes are respiratory failure. In respiratory failure, the lungs cannot adequately provide oxygen leading to hypoxemia that is decreased level of oxygen in blood which eventually causes hypoxia and the other causes are any kind of airway obstruction. The symptoms are decreased SpO2 and cyanosis. ABG is an important clinical parameter to know the gases. So what to do in this case? You have to start with oxygen, intubate and ventilate the patient and sometimes VV ECMO can be used that is veno-venous extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. The next reversible causes is accumulation of hydrogen ion and we call them as acidosis. As there is increased hydrogen ion then the pH would be decreased and the possible causes are type 2 respiratory failure where there will be accumulation of CO2 and the next cause is metabolic acidosis. It occurs due to sepsis, toxins, diabetic ketoacidosis or alcoholic ketoacidosis. We can rule out through ABG whether the patient is metabolic or respiratory. In case the patient is respiratory acidosis, intubate and ventilate the patient. And in case the patient is metabolic acidosis, consider sodium bicarbonate for the patient. Now let's continue with hypo or hyperkalemia. Hypo is less than 3.5 and hyper is more than 5.5. The possible causes of hypokalemia are vomit, diarrhea and diuretics. And the hyperkalemia causes are renal failure, DKA, burns, trauma and hemolysis. The ECG changes of hypokalemia are inverted of flat T and U waves and hyperkalemia causes peaked T waves and wide QRS. The ECG changes in hypokalemia is seen when it is less than 2.7. In case hypokalemia, Immediately consider potassium replacement and if patient is hyperkalemia, consider calcium to protect the cardiac muscle, insulin with 50% dextro dextrose to drive the potassium back into the cells and other drugs are albuterol, alazix and sodium bicarbonate or else you have to consider if the patient is uh, needed with dialysis. Next is hypothermia. Consider temperature will be less than 35 degrees Celsius and if temperature goes less than 30 degrees Celsius then there will be a decreased cardiac output. The hypothermia will be because of uh, some exposure 
the early signs of hypothermia are irrational behavior decreased heart rate slurred speech increased shivering uh, feeling cold and clumsiness the treatment options can be active or passive rewarming providing blanket or warm fluids the last h is hypoglycemia if the blood sugar level is below 50 mg per deciliter or less than 3 millimol per liter then start with 50% dextrose as soon as possible now let's see about the five t's the first t is toxins toxins are caused by calcium channel blockers beta blockers digoxin tca that is tricyclic antidepressants and cocaine the clinical findings are ecg changes with prolonged qt waves pupils and relevant drug history must be checked with the patient and appropriate uh, antidote must be given if possible the next t is tamponade that is the fluid build up around the heart which can leads to decreased ventricular filling and decreased cardiac output the causes may be post cardiac surgery aortic dissection trauma and pericarditis the clinical symptoms are back strain that is there will be jugular vein distension muffled heart sound and hypotension the clinical finding can be done with bedside usg and echo the management would be pericardiosynthesis and thoracotomy now let's discuss about the tension pneumothorax it is the air accumulation in pleural space this builds up pressure on heart vessel and decrease the preload and cardiac output the causes are trauma hydrogenic and barotrauma the clinical findings are jugular vein distension dyspnea tracheal deviation uneven breath sounds and the x-ray The management is needle decompression and chest tube insertion. The next reversible causes is thrombus. The thrombus can be either coronary or pulmonary. If coronary, it blocks the cardiac vessel and low perfusion to cardiac muscle which causes hypoxia and cell death. The symptoms are substernal chest pain and ST changes. The immediate percutaneous coronary intervention, thrombolytics and coronary artery bypass graft must be done. In case if the patient is pulmonary thrombus it restricts the blood flow to the right ventricle and cause symptoms of shortness of breath hypoxia and tachycardia the immediate management is embolectomy fibrinolytics and ecmo in reversible causes the last t is trauma for which we need to follow the advanced trauma life support which includes the primary and secondary survey and the things we need to consider for this in the trauma bay and the emergency department that's all about the five heads and five tails we need to consider all the vital parameters and which possible action we need to start immediately to restore the life of the patient in cardiac arrest if you have any question or suggestion please give in the comment box if you didn't subscribe the channel don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get the uploaded videos immediately Thanks for watching and keep supporting.